So, uh, here's Peter of England, and he's going to talk about the election for five minutes. Thank you very much. Okay, th thanks everyone. I know you've been listening uh, almost non-stop uh, for an hour and a half, and also before the break. So this is just a, a quick uh, uh, quick comment that I actually passed to uh, a lady uh, earlier in the evening, around 8 o'clock. And so she said that I should just maybe come in and, and, and make this point. But uh, going up to the general election and everybody's uh, encouraging everyone else to go to the polls and vote for, for either Labour or Conservative or whoever your party of choice is. Uh, one of the things that I uh, was going to do a video on, and hopefully I'll do it when I get the motivation over the next few days, and this is the, the concept of actually voting, should you vote, and does it actually make any difference? So one of the, uh, one of the aspects of this of voting situation is that when you go into the, the voting booth, as you all know, uh, you have to put a mark or an X in one of the, the boxes against the favoured candidate. Now what you should possibly realise is that uh, the mark of the X, or for someone who's actually making a signature with an X, uh, as far as uh, legal documents are concerned, are typically people who are dis uh, um, actually considered to be incompetent or uh, illiterate. So if you actually look at the, the definition of when you would be able to use the X as a mark historically, that was usually for people who were imbeciles, idiots, delinquents, wards of court, paupers, or other, certain, should we say, aliens. Uh, so when you're actually putting this mark onto the ballot paper, what in fact you are doing is confirming that you are actually an incompetent or a ward, because you're actually voting within one of the 900, sorry, 9,530 odd electoral wards in the in the country so for those people who actually say yes you really do need to vote otherwise you can't affect the, the result or you can't participate in the democratic process i actually think that is one of the main uh, points to note that it is actually a cross if you actually look at the uh, something called a, a chiasmus on, in roman law uh, a chiasmatic formula was actually something that imparted a totally different meaning to the sentence than was actually thought of in the uh, in the actual dialogue so that was one of the, the things that I was talking about so for those people who say oh yes you really do need to vote maybe yes voting but not by putting an X on the box and this is the same throughout Europe whether you're in Poland Slovenia in France Germany or the UK the uh, actual machinery of getting you to actually uh, negate yourself is by having you confirm that you are a, a ward of the parish or a, 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 an incompetent. So that's that point. The other point I'd just like to try and make is that uh, I've been over in England now for about three weeks. Uh, on the 13th of uh, April, that's just in a few days' time, we a Bank will actually be in possession of its first tranche of printing of 100 checkbooks. Uh, these have been done by a security printing company that's agreed to actually uh, make the first run. They took some persuading before they'd actually do it. Now, uh, this company actually provides all the checkbooks for the five major clearing banks. The checks will be on security paper with ultraviolet ink, uh, and so will be cleared through We Are Bank in Manchester. And so this comes in as tying in with some of the comments that made by previous speakers tonight when they've been talking about um, using promissory notes or when you can't use a promissory note, when you should use a bill of exchange. What you will have as of uh, Monday, and I've left one or two pieces of uh, literature around, and please just go to wearebank.co.uk. Um, what you will have from, from Monday is actually an organization that will stand behind you and pay for all your public-based liabilities. So that's in effect anything that you're being accused of being a straw man for, anything that you are incurring a liability from, either HMRC, the VAT, council tax, uh, public fines, court fines, um, parking fines, basically anything that's been thrown at you, the point from here on in is don't fight it, pay it. So we're also in the process of trying to put together a, a set of uh, streetwear uh, or identifiable, uh, can we say, logos so that when people turn up, maybe uh, at Mr. Crawford's or whether they turn up uh, at other places to beat the bailiffs, uh, then what is seen to be happening is that there's a, a uniformed organization instead of people who might otherwise you know, only be recognized as just passing through on the day. 
And one of the key things that I've been over here now to try and do, and I'm going to do it now coming up towards the election, is trying to go through to various groups around the country, whether it's Simon Spaniard's uh, White Rabbit Trust in various locations, and I met Mark uh, a couple of weeks ago to discuss the checkbook issue, is really to try and stop, we, we should start bringing all of these people together now, from Kent Freedom Movement, Movement from Freedom Northwest, and people further afield, so that we do actually come together under an umbrella. Uh, British Constitution Group with um, uh, Roger Hayes. Uh, all of these people, you know, hopefully will come together so that we can actually sing from the same hymn sheet. Otherwise, I think what will happen is we'll just be left sort of uh, wandering in the wilderness and we'll never become a credible alternative. Uh, so that's where I see it. It's got to go to the next level now because if we're not perceived as being any type of threat inverted commas, then we're not really doing our work. So it needs to be elevated. One of the main keys uh, that I'm trying to push forward now and stand or fall on the on the sort of strength of, of my commitment here is that people who said, no, you can't go near a bank, uh, Dave Fishwick also said, oh no, you know, I have the same trouble with Bank of Dave, which everybody might have heard of. Bank of Dave, no. Okay, so we actually have it, it's there, it's up and running. The, just to cover quickly, very in, in hopefully under two minutes now to conclude, the assets within the bank, uh, the number of people over the last year and a half that have pledged promissory notes to the bank, which then act as a funding mechanism, an asset in the vault of the bank, which then allows you to cash your checks against the communal pool, uh, are in excess, of, in excess of 15 million in promissory notes. There is a small syndicate in Malaysia who have actually allowed me to what's called hypothecate, that means pledge as an equity within the bank, uh, something called 1934 Chicago Federal Reserve Gold Certificate Fractional Reserve uh, Notes. Um, these are typically things that came out of the 1931 and gold confis sorry, 1933 Gold Confiscation Act in the United States. Um, these are one of the main reasons that John Kennedy got shot in, in uh, 1963 following the, what's called the Hilton Green Agreement. So we actually have real physical assets pledged to the bank and then the final part is under the, uh, what's called the Bank of England Q1 quarterly review. Uh, in 2014 it states on the front of the, the document that um, the general public and the academics have had a misunderstanding of the way money is produced. And what they actually say is, the common misapprehension uh, mis uh, is that a bank has to have deposits before it can make loans. This has been a big mistake, everybody's got it wrong. And what they actually say now that is that the bank makes a loan and at the moment the bank makes a loan, it creates a simultaneous deposit in the account of the customer. So, that actually turns it on its head completely, and what's good enough for the Bank of England is good enough for us. So if any of you then that come along and join We Are Bank, we are very happy to create a loan for you, which will create a deposit in your account. So that's one of the things we'll work on. We'll use their, the best, or the worst, sorry, of what they've got to be the best that we have. And then in combination with the promissory notes, the hypothecated uh, um, gold certificates. Um, and if anyone wants to find out a little bit more about that, they should look at a chap called Neil Keenan, uh, under neilkeenan.com. These are tied in with what's called the global collateral accounts, or what's called prepaid treasury. This is supposed to be the holy grail of where all the money is. And what we also find out is the official figures by the World Bank on um, above surface 99.9% .9 gold uh, pure, 99.9% sorry, 99.9% .9 fine. Uh, the official figure is uh, 183 to 186,000 metric tons. And what we actually find out is that's closer to 4.5 million metric tons and that's kept in tunnels uh, near the, uh, by the Bank of International Settlements in Basel in about 30 kilometers of uh, underground uh, sort of tunnels. So that's really what I wanted to say. Thank you very much for giving me the time to do it. So hopefully very good news for the future. And as long as I'm still out and free, you'll know it's working. Peter! Uh, 
and I think it's going to be Mr. Taylor who's going to come up and he's doing a strip there, so <laughs> too many pipes. I'll give you everything. Right. Big hand for, for God. Right, chaps then. Uh, I mean, ultimately, I mean, the people that have been here tonight are splendid. And people like Rob, who's coming towards you, I've been so educated by Rob over the years that I've known him, it's unreal. Because we're dealing with an onion, and we're dealing with layers of that onion, and the understanding of different layers it gives us a different interpretation. I think, first and foremost, we should all gain forces and go and kill that lot in there. Right? Because, you know, whatever's happening, they're obviously, like, uh, unaware of it. They're a teacher's association or something. I don't know. Right? This is going to be a very short thing that I'm doing, because I haven't really got any more than I've ever said. But, if everyone puts their hands up, shall we go and kill the occupants in the next room? Yay! Right. I'm on my way. <laughs> Henry, calm down. So what I don't like to say, and it's very brief, right? I call this, this is probably the shortest speech I've ever done in my life. Um, I call it burglary, bailiffs, and the mentally ill. Right? So burglary and bailiffs. Let's have a look at it. The difference between a, the only difference between a burglar and a bailiff is the paperwork. If they haven't got the paperwork, they're a burglar. So this is what we've been trying to educate the old bill, the police with, right? Burglar, bailiff, paperwork. No paperwork, it's a burglary, it's a thief, yeah? And that's what we've got to realise. Everything they use is a statutory instrument, right? So we must engage with the... First thing we want to see is, anytime anybody comes to us, you're a bailiff, right? I want to check your identity. I want to make sure that you're SIA registered and I want to check the statutory instrument. That's what we're doing with all of these characters. And the police, hopefully, we're picking up on it. Then we're dealing with the mentally ill. And what is the mentally ill, right? I'll tell you what the mentally ill is. If a group of people came to us and said, tell you what, we're all in fancy dress, but we're running the show, and we know we're all talking, you think you're talking English, but we interpret all your words completely differently. They're not English, to us they mean something else. And we're going to give you the law. And please trust me, what we're saying is correct. That's what these clowns are doing to us. This is exactly what they're doing. This is, this is where we've got them. South litigants in this country have started to unpick everything that these guys have done to everybody here if we've all got different opinions and different great keep picking away we're not going to focus our attention on something they can a barricade everybody meets does what they're doing like with tom and sue's place we all get there and what do we do first we exchange numbers meet talk about stuff yeah we're gaining in numbers every day this lot are shitting himself and I mean that, you know, I, I had, a, I had a, a guy the other morning, my, my, my phone line went out uh, on Monday because of the wind. And, and unfortunately, Linda's away, so on Tuesday there was some guy from Wales who'd been sleeping in the car park going to take me down to Wales to a court case for an 88-year-old lady who was so disabled she couldn't get to court for a council tax and I promised to go. So I, I went down there when I went in there. It's them and us. They know what we're saying is right. They don't want us engaging them, right, okay? But we look right is might. And we have got the right. And in this country, let me tell you now, everybody is waking up. You guys, right, okay, have woken up a lot more than other people, right? But everybody knows. There's things going wrong all the fucking time, all the time, right? Things are coming into the event horizon, right? People are getting bailiff letters, etc., etc. They've got no authority. They can't do what they do under law. They might. Now we're examining. They can't do it legally. We're examining this, so they can't do it legally. Never mind lawfully. So we're taking it all apart, and our numbers are gaining. Unfortunately, tonight, like it sounds like that uh, EastEnders and you know.
coronation tree out there. But that's nobody's fault, right? We should have had a, a half K rig or something here where we would have overwhelmed them. But unfortunately, it hasn't happened, right? But we're your numbers. Talk to everybody, meet everybody, exchange numbers. We are winning. We are winning. We are winning. They're, they're creating more rules, more regulations, more red tape, which we can trip them up with every day of the week. We're winning this battle, and we will continue to win this battle, because ultimately we're right. And we're going to be on the right side of history. We ain't going to be on the wrong side of history. We're going to be on the right side of history. And that's why all of you here today are here. You've heard wonderful people talking about all the stuff tonight. And listen, it's onwards and upwards. Let's get it going. This is going to be our year. We're going to kick ass of these shitheads. And, and that's my lot, yeah? So it's very brief for me, but wonderful night tonight. Let's keep it moving. Let's keep all the organisations moving. Let's all meet. Let's all do things, right, okay? We know more than they do. We do. We know more than they do. Okay? They've not dusted off those books. They've not, they think, oh, well, this is the way it is, you know, this is what we do, yeah? Well, it's, it ain't what we do. We're human beings, right? If they want to apply the rules to us, we're going to apply the law to them. So, onwards and upwards. So I think that's, that's it for the evening, isn't it? Yeah, so I'd like to thank everybody that's come along, especially all you people. Who would have thought this on the 23rd of July, uh, a year ago, that this would happen, uh, Mark saying him, but basically, it, it, this is absolutely, oh, I tell a lie, uh, there is, somebody is going to say a few words, and it's uh, Wendy, it's, uh, it's about Melvin, so, um, are you ready? Okay, here she is. Uh, applause for Wendy. Hello. I'm, <laughs> I'm a supporter of Melanie Shaw. I think a lot of you may be aware of Melanie. She's a child abuse victim from Beechwood. I first became aware of Melanie on the 9th of July through the UK poem when she first disappeared. And then on the 12th of July, she was actually believed, the news article went out, she was believed to be in Peterborough Jail. Now, you're looking at the lady that lives a mile and a half away from Peterborough Jail. Before the news program had finished, I was on the phone. They wouldn't admit Melanie was there, they just said, well, write to her. So I did, that was the wrong day. Saturday, I got a letter back. So I had that up on all the Facebook pages and gave it to Brian to put the number out for everybody. And Melanie wrote loads of letters, she got lots of letters. And she wrote to everybody possible. We attended a court case, which was a fallacy. The judge told the jury that Operation Daybreak was a figment of Melanie's delusions. Originally, they said she burnt down. She burnt down on three different nights. We're not sure which one. Plus, there was no evidence of the fire brigade log. No evidence provided in court. Yet Melanie was forced to accept the judge's ruling from a psychiatrist that seen for one hour in Peterborough Jail, as opposed to her own psychiatrist, who's known for 15 years. And she had to accept that she didn't have PTSD, she was delusional. And then by accepting that, she got three years probation instead of four years in jail. Since she came out of jail, she's been harassed one way or another. Her doors were put through. She's ended up being taken to the Nottingham Hospital. The police tried to have a section. They sent her out after 48 hours. And then eventually, she disappeared again. We found out she was back in Peterborough. No new charges. The first time she was in court this time, which was beginning of there? No, no, no. February, I think. Yes, beginning of February. Nobody knew she was going to be in court, so there was nobody there. She was then due in court on the 27th of February. 
and we could call like for people to attend. But at the same time, a solicitor, who she doesn't want, actually put a Twitter message out that she would not be in court in person, it would be a video link. But we still came up from Peterborough because we were going to miss a chance to let Melanie see people here. People have written to Melanie. Over 500 people that I am aware of have written to Melanie this time. Nobody has received a letter back until I started telling people to do the letters registered because then they had to be signed for. And suddenly one letter arrived at UK column begging for help. Nothing else since. The judge on the 27th of February told Melanie that well, he said she, first of all she was accused of sending messages, false messages, and she was also accused of holding a gentleman, uh, Tony Cranberg, against his will. We now found out this Tony Cranberg is a paramedic. And we believe that all that happened, Melanie, in a very upset state, state was talking to him went through the door. Because he has not brought the charges. Somebody else has. In the courtroom on the 27th, we very kindly put Melanie in courtroom 4. Where you cannot see the dock from the public area. So I actually got into trouble for sticking my head round and was told to sit down by the judge. But at least Melanie knew we were there for her. And she was remanded back, and the judge was saying, well, it was a QC, I believe. He was saying he wanted a back in court after a medical test that he would order, and he would say he was doing them. And he was trying to work a dirt out when up popped the clerk of the court, and we heard him saying, Judge Pert wanted her back in front of him. So now she's up on May the 18th in front of Judge Pert. She was also in court last week that nobody knew about and she was ordered to accept the solicitors she previously sacked as she would be found incompetent. So this Sunday, on the 5th of April, which is Easter Sunday, in Peterborough, where we have the last vigil, we are having speakers, including Nigel from uh, White Flowers. Nikki Sullivan is coming down to speak. Mandy Cooper's coming down from the Cannes Child News from Stop Nottingham. I shall be speaking. I've been promised that Belinda McKenzie will come up. She's not quite a few speakers. After this speech, we're going to go around once again to Bakerfield outside Peterborough Prison. And hopefully, when we go around the side, she will get to see us from her cell because nobody yet has received a letter from Melanie. So she doesn't even know she's got this support. So if anybody can make Peterborough on Sunday, Cathedral Square in the centre of Peterborough join us or about two o'clock outside Peterborough Jail on Bakersfield. So at 12 o'clock in Cathedral Square and about two o'clock on Bakersfield outside the prison. I don't think I've got anything to say. If anybody else, I've tried to put leaflets on every table, but you know, Melanie's got to be supported. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can I just say, right, okay, because obviously we've been trying out, we're trying to gain information, there's other people having a good time, which you can't knock them for, right? But let's all have a little chance, right, to knock this out, right? Can, I, can we all agree on that, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah? So let's all start off, right, we go, freedom, 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 freedom! absolutely brilliant so I'd like to thank everybody who's come along and talked each one of you deserved at least two three hours each because of the information you've got it's uh, incredible all the research that's gone into most of the things that you've all talked about so I'd like to thank everyone else who's come along and supported us uh, 
and what can I say? I'm always short of words. So give yourselves all a big applause because you've been brilliant.